Alright, one of you guys wanted me to talk about meiosis and mitosis, so why don't we talk about the entire cell cycle? That would be epic. Hello everybody, I'm Prora, and today we're going to be talking about the entire cell cycle from interphase all the way to mitosis. And the reason why is because I think that this is actually a pretty hard topic to understand. Because there's so many chromosomes involved, where do they split, what the heck, how do you go from N to 2N? To like 4N, but like 2N, except they're split. Whatever, it's really confusing. Let us just talk about how it works, okay? If you guys want more chem crash courses, okay, I'm not doing them right now because I'm kind of busy right now, but I will get back on those as soon as possible. But let us talk about meiosis and mitosis. And the reason why I didn't brand this as Yusubo or Ichibo is because it's applicable to both. Both of them ask pretty in-depth questions about the cell cycle, so I think it's really important you understand this. All right, so you got a cell, right? Cell cycle, got to have a cell. Now I'm going to represent chromosomes by a line, okay? So this is a single chromosome, this is a duplicated chromosome, okay? Now my duplicated is still one chromosome, okay? This is one chromosome. The two parts, however, are called chromatid, and they're connected by a centromere. So don't forget this, duplicated chromosome means that it has two sister chromatids, okay? Not that it's two separate chromosomes. Now a typical human cell has 46 chromosomes, okay? That's because you get 23 from your mom, 23 from your dad. Same thing happens with a lot of animals, so I'm just going to go with a 4 chromosome animal. So you got 2 from his dad and 2 from his mom. Alright, so right now we can see that it has 4 chromosomes, right? And none of them are duplicated, they're just 4 chromosomes hanging out there. The total number of chromosomes is just called the diploid number. And this number is represented 2n, because diploid, that's why you got a 2 there. So for this particular cell, the diploid number is 4. And we know that each parent gives like the same set of chromosomes, right? Like there's a chromosome 1 through 23 for humans, and each mom gives one chromosome 1, each dad gives one chromosome 1. So in this case, let's say that both of these guys are chromosome 1, and then both of these guys are chromosome 2. So basically once we take these chromosomes that are the same number, like they're both chromosome 1, but they're from different parents, those are called homologous pairs, okay? The way I like to remember it is they're not identical, right? But they are similar, hence they're homologous. Not exactly the same, but, you know, close enough. So anyways, right now it has a diploid number of chromosomes. However, half of this number, just represented n, is called a haploid number. And basically that's how much you get from each parent. So that would be 2 in this case, half of the diploid number. So this basically is our normal cell, okay? So let's talk about the phases of the cell cycle. So the cell cycle starts out in interphase, okay? And interphase is basically whatever is not divided. So if it's not doing meiosis, it's not doing mitosis, it is an interphase. An interphase is broken up into three parts. There's G1, which is basically growing. It grows, it makes more RNA, more proteins, so that it can grow even more. And S phase is synthesis, right? S for synthesis, and basically, you're synthesizing stuff, you synthesize your DNA, you duplicate your DNA. Alright, so now we have to duplicate all these chromosomes. So now we're finished S phase, all these guys are duplicated, okay? But remember, we still have only four chromosomes, okay? This X right here is one chromosome, you can't say that it's two, okay? So this cell is still diploid, but it has duplicated chromosomes. Even though it has like eight chromatid, it has four chromosomes. Alright, then in G2, it keeps growing, and it's basically the same as G1. There's some minor differences, but it doesn't really matter. Alright, and then finally, it goes into mitosis. Because everything's been prepared, right? It's been growing, it's been duplicating its DNA, now it's finally ready to uh, divide, so it divides. Now, of course, before every important part in the chain, there is a checkpoint. Because your cell cycle does not want to continue if it's not ready to continue. So before it duplicates DNA, it has a G1 checkpoint, okay? And so this guy has a checkpoint, and this guy has a checkpoint too. Now the reason why there's a checkpoint over here is because it needs to prepare itself to replicate the DNA. If it's not ready to replicate the DNA and it tries to do it, then it's just going to get screwed over, okay? It's the most important thing that you can get right, so that's why there's a checkpoint for that. Same with mitosis, if you screw up mitosis, you're dead too. So that's why there's a checkpoint over here. It makes sure everything is ready for division. Alrighty, so now we go into mitosis. Let us talk about the different parts of mitosis. So basically, this is your cell right after it comes out of interphase and we're going into mitosis. So the first phase of mitosis is prophase, okay? And the way I like to remember it is PMAT. Prophase, metaphase, and then PMAT A, so anaphase, and then telophase. Epic, okay. So in prophase, basically what happens is it sets up for the division. Nothing really cool happens. But basically, if these chromosomes were stuck in a nucleus, the nucleus breaks down, so the chromosomes will be exposed. 
them and the sentry old moved to the right location so that they would be ready to carry out division. Nothing actually happened yet. The sentry old just moved into position so they would be ready. And basically that's all you have to know really. The nucleus breaks down, the sentry old move into position and it gets ready to divide. So basically the next step is metaphase, right? And basically what happens is these centrioles over here, they go and reach out to these chromosomes and they all grab them real good. All right, so both these centrioles grab the thing and they start pulling them apart from each other and eventually they line up in the center of the cell. This right here is called the metaphase plate, okay? Now this is basically exactly how I remember that metaphase is actually where it lines up because if there's a metaphase plate, plate flat, which is why in metaphase they gotta line up. But then again, you gotta memorize that the metaphase plate exists for that. So what's another way you can memorize it? Okay, like a really stupid way that I've heard people memorize it is like meta, there's a TA at the end, so it's like a table, a table. Tables are flat, so basically it forms a table in the middle of the cell. Wow, okay, that's kind of a stretch, but like still, it works, okay? And then anaphase is where things actually happen, okay? So this is the interesting part because basically what happens is separates splits up these guys, okay? So now the chromosomes are split into their identical sister chromatids, remember? So, they split and they get pulled to the pole. So that's basically what happens in anaphase, and then in telophase what happens is that these two things start pushing out from each other. So basically the cell elongates and gets ready to slap itself in with half, okay? So basically it looks kind of like this, how it's about to divide, and it got all its chromosomes over here, and it got some chromosomes on the other side. And like a really cool thing that I learned in Campo is that to elongate, it basically puts microtubules on each other and it pushes. So there would be like a microtubule all the way across here and like they would push each other out using the microtubule. But anyways, at the very end, cytokinesis happens because cytoplasm, kinesis, breaking the cytoplasm, basically what happens is they completely separate. And you are left with one cell here, one cell there, and they have all these single guys. So if you are paying attention very closely, you could tell why these new cells are exactly identical, right? Because this guy is identical to this guy, right? Because they're sister chromatids on the same chromosome. This guy is identical to this guy, this guy is identical to this guy, and then this guy is identical to this guy. So these sister chromatids go to opposite sides, and that's why the end product is two identical daughter cells. And hooray, we're also left with what we thought we would have at G1. So it makes sense. Now mitosis gets even more confusing because now we actually had to think about homologous chromosomes. Okay, so let's talk about meiosis. So once again, we start with our epic guy of a cell. And let's assume that it went through interphase, so all of its chromosomes are duplicated. Whoa, blammo. Okay, so in prophase 1 of meiosis, it's exactly the same as prophase 1 in mitosis, okay? Except there's one specific thing because, you know, like in... Sexual reproduction, they want to get more like genetic variability, right? So how do they do that? It happens in prophase 1. You know that mom and dad gave you two of the exact same chromosomes except their own version of it, right? Well, we don't want to give our kids like exactly what our dad gave us or exactly what our mom gave us. That wouldn't give any variability. We got to give a mixture of our two traits that we got from our mom and our dad. So the way they do that is something called crossing over. And basically what that happens is these two homologous chromosomes, because one from your dad and one from your mom, come together. Because we can't mix like a chromosome one for your mom and a chromosome two from your dad. It has to be the same chromosome. And that's why it has to be a homologous pair. So they come together, they cross over, make a little mixture of dad and mom stuff. And then now they're ready to go on to the next step. So these guys get a little bit of red in them and the other guys get a little bit of blue in them. And pretend the other one has a mixture of the two, okay? But anyway, now it goes on to metaphase 1, because basically the steps are exactly the same. PMAT, except there's a 1 and a 2. So in metaphase 1, however, this is where the memorization gets kind of intense. This time, instead of lining up on the plate by themselves, these chromosomes first pair up with their other counterpart, okay? So just like they did in crossing over how they paired up here, they pair up again, and then they line up in the center. So the red guys pair with the corresponding blue guys, Right, and basically the centrioles put them all in the center. Now the thing that messes up a lot of people is what happens at anaphase. Which ones break up? Is it the sister chromatid that break up or is it the homologous chromosomes that break up? The way I like to remember is that the ones that are less similar break up first. So you know that sister chromatids are really similar, right? So they're going to hold together, stay with their sister for as long as possible. But homologous chromosomes don't even care about each other, dude. They're not related. What? Why, why would they care about each other? So, the homologous chromosomes are the first ones to let go, so instead of the sister chromatids separating, the homologous chromosomes separate. 
Alright, and a phase one. You see how like there's two chromosomes here? Which one goes to whichever side doesn't really it's it's random, it's completely random. So in this case, the red one went up for this one, but the blue one went up for that one. It's random, okay? And also remember that all of these chromosomes have crossed over. So there's parts of red and parts of blue in each one, but like I'm just representing it like this for now. Alrighty, so now that this has happened, it goes through telophase and now you're left with this. If we look at which poles had which chromosome, we see the top had a blue and a red cross, so we put that, and the same with the other one. Alright, so this is what we're left with, right, after meiosis 1. How many chromosomes are in each one? This one has two chromosomes, and this one has two chromosomes. So, now these cells are haploid, okay? They are not diploid, they are haploid now. And then each one basically divides again through the same step. Prophase 2. The nucleus breaks down and everything sets up for division. Metaphase 2, these chromosomes line up. Uh, anaphase 2, the sister chromatids split up from each other. And telophase 2, uh, the two cells push out from each other. And then cytokinesis splits completely. So basically, this just happens exactly like mitosis. So these guys remain entirely the same number of chromosomes, except the sister chromatids split up. Already epic! So basically, we went from a starting cell with four duplicated chromosomes, meaning it had four chromosomes, eight uh, chromatids, and then it went to four cells with two chromatids each. So it makes sense. Very cool. Alrighty, that's basically how I think about my meiosis and mitosis. I think about them exactly the same way. Mitosis, once you memorize mitosis, you can apply it to meiosis and then everything falls into place. The main problem is knowing what haploid means, okay? Haploid and diploid are not based on how many chromatids you have, it's based on how many chromosomes you have. So even if a chromosome is duplicated, it still counts as one chromosome. Alrighty, I hope that was helpful. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know what kind of videos you guys want in the future. Other than that, thank you guys for watching again. See you guys next time.